Ready, set, go. Ready, set, go. Okay, everybody, we're going to do a little video here and show everybody the current status of the split bumper. You're probably not going to like this. There it is. It's been sitting in here for, what, a year and one, two, year and three months. It ain't moved. Dirty, looking like shit. No motor, no trans, no exhaust. Interior all ripped out. We had pulled the motor and tranny out of this car in January of last year or December of the year before. And so the motor to buy the MH7 Hemi we got for the Chevelle. So it's just been sitting ever since. About two, three months, four months before the Chevelle was done, I made a decision to upgrade the motor uh, for the Chevelle. I didn't want to spend all that money building a car and not have a motor in it that would compete. So I sold all that shit to buy that motor and basically it was all for nothing because we ended up not raising it anyway so i mean she just needs cleaned up she's a little dusty i think we're going to get us the motor and tranny and put back in it and i don't know i'd like to give the car a complete makeover it needs the motor moved back about five inches the, the biggest thing with these npk cars and even a, a street racing car is the mid plate to center rear axle measurement, which ideal is 80 to 82 inches. This car is 87 and a half. That's why we've had such a hard time making this car go fast. Now, the reason it worked on the street was we carried 220 pounds in a trunk and it made the weight ratios 50-50. So we could make it work, but we were racing the car at 3,260 pounds. So, like at the cash days where we went to the finals, when we raced Ryan in the finals, I couldn't 60 foot with Ryan because he had a 2,700 pound car versus 3,250. So, if we was to move this motor back five inches, we could do a whole lot better with this car than we ever did. And since they changed the tire rule, this is the exact tire everybody's running in NPK. So we built the Chevelle so we could run a 36 inch tall tire. Now they outlawed it. So now you got a 34, 5, 17. Well, that's what we've been running on this all along. So we got to make some decisions here. I mean, basically I give this car to Brandon, but if I decide to put it back together and race it, I mean, that's what we'll do. We don't know at this point. I just wanted everybody to see everybody. A lot of people assume this car is sitting here still ready to race. And it is not. It would take a bunch of money to put this car back together, too. So, a bunch of modification to get it where you want it. Yeah, and, and at, at that point, if I, you know, if I'm going to go spend the money for the motor and the tranny, I want to find a chassis shop that'll cut the front off and move the motor back five inches. And I think the car would be a lot more competitive. I'm really <coughs> comfortable in this car. It's just this car will run high four O's low 14s like a bracket car but when you start trying to go faster than that it's like pushing a rope down the road it just fights you it just it don't want to hold any more power we need to move the motor back so and i hear constant shit on the internet blaming brandon so just so all of you know we've had steve petty we've had jamie miller we've had multiple big names out with this car and one day to track with this car and their exact words were, you need to build another car because of that motor placement. So all you talking shit about Brandon not knowing how to tune, you don't know what the hell you're talking about. He went 403 with the car. And I mean, Petty went 402 and Jamie Miller went 405. So he's right in the mix. Right where it should be. Um, you know, basically that's what we were doing. We needed to do a video. We ain't done nothing in a while. We want to get our YouTube back up and going. 
And so I figured I'd show everybody the terrible condition that this car is in right now. I can cut this out, but are you thinking about redoing this car? I am thinking about it. It's going to depend on what I do this season as far as MPK. If somebody came along and offered the right amount of money for that Chevelle, it could go bye-bye and I'd take a bunch of that money and put this car back together because this, after what, so after what just happened today, I don't know if y'all watched this or not, but stat guys have been doing a thing over the last week of the coolest cars in MP MPK. So this car went up against 95 other cars and got voted the coolest car that's ever been in MPK through season six. So I didn't realize that this car was such a fan favorite. So I'm kind of leaning back towards maybe doing something with this car again. And I don't know if I win the lottery, I'll keep the Chevelle and do this one. Got to play to win. Got to yeah. Tonight too, ain't it? I don't even know. I bought $100 worth of tickets last week. Didn't win shit. Oh, 120 bucks. Anyway, that's where we're at. This car is still sitting here. This car will never go nowhere. Um, I actually, my old painter hit me up today. He's the one that originally painted it and it, when it had the brushed aluminum stripes down in Texas. His name's Matt. And I told him I was thinking about doing a makeover and he said, let's do it. I want to do the paint. So for me to do this car, I just want to buy a new front clip, new doors, front half it, and then let him do his thing on the body. Cause the last guy that touched the body on this was a jackass that didn't know what the hell he was doing. And I ended up paying another guy to come in and finish it up the best he could and get us back out racing. And it could be a whole lot nicer than it, it, it has been nicer than it is right now. So anyway, we still got Mike, Mike, Mike on here. Our producer that passed away. Other than that, I mean, everything's here but the motor or tranny. And to be honest, if I put this car back together, I'd probably put it back together twin turbo again. Just because that's how I drove it the last four or five years. And I'd like to see what it would do with that setup and the motor is sitting where it's supposed to be. No thoughts about the Hemi in it. I mean, the Hemi's cool, but if if we wanted to street race this car again, that Hemi's so loud, you're not gonna get it out and test it somewhere without having the cops all over you. And this car's history is street racing. So if I put it back together, we gotta do that with it. Anyway, that's it. There's the car. No motor, no tranny, no turbos. We still have all the exhaust, piping, everything where we could put it back. And it wouldn't take too long to do it. Of course, all that's probably going to change when they move the motor back anyway. So I don't know that any of that would be reusable. But anyway, that's that's what we're thinking about right now. Mainly, this video is just to show everybody we still have it. It's sitting here. We ain't doing nothing with it. It's got two inches of dust on it and it ought to be getting treated better than this. It's got a history. She definitely made her name. To be honest, the last two months I've been in the woods deer hunting and I haven't been out here in this shop 15 minutes since the middle of October. So I guess it's time for me to get back out here and start playing with cars and figure out what the hell we're gonna do. Adiós. Adiós, amigos.
stop right there, I'm gonna hook.